Okay, so uh, the second part of our lecture is going to be about the Fuqahas and the Mazahi, schools of thought in Islam. Okay, the most common ones now. I mean, within Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Um, so you will see how uh, fiqh used to be very strong in the past and slowly, slowly losing its importance and coming to the level of zero in our time minus zero somewhere just maybe minus 100 or minus 200 okay so now when you question the things when you analyze the things you are very badly humiliated it's your Hanafi scholars humiliate you Hanafi scholars do so but let's go back let's go back to understand where is the root of this Zahiri understanding as well as reasoning and analyzing. Where is it coming from? Okay, so uh, it necessitates us to look back to the uh, time of the Sahaba. Time of the Sahaba and sources of the Madahib. Just before I will um, go to the actual uh, thing, I uh, want to clarify some terminology. So obviously, it is a subject that in our time, um, explains halal and permissible and prohibited things. Okay, for example, um, uh, eating, for example, um, eating a pork in Islam is prohibited. Okay, so that is subject of film. Or uh, drinking, uh, for example, uh, wine. I don't say alcohol. I, I say wine is again prohibited. It's again the matter of film. Okay. And then, um, fiqhi understanding, Zahiri, Zahiri is literalists, okay? The people who never look into the reasoning and the circumstance of the incident, but there is some hadith state something, they take it literally without comparing it to the rest of the things. Ibrahim Nakhai, inshallah I'm going to explain, is one of the sources of Hanafi fiqh. He is direct teacher of Abu Hanifa. Once he has been asked about him accepting hadith. So Ibrahim Nakhai said, I find some hadith, I take one hadith, but before applying it, I compare it to hundreds of other hadith. Does it match or not? If it matches, then I act, or what I reject. That is the fiqhi way. Okay, why? Because religion is not something that one is in west and one is in east. It's not that, but it's one whole. It is one whole picture. You do not find one piece is totally different to the rest. You do not find it. Okay? So it is one whole. And one, all of that whole, based on something called wisdom. Why? Because in our madhab, we say that wisdom of God necessitates itself in each single act of God. Okay? So, the wise person, in our normal observation, when he does things, or when he says things, it is reasonable, questionable, and it is by reasoning. He does not do something with no any reason. Okay, so for example, I'm just speaking now, so suddenly I'm speaking about banana. Suddenly, I will say, um, uh, moonwalking Michael Jackson <laughs> does, not, does not match. Unless if the one who was walking, walking on the moon was walking with the banana back, you know? <laughs> then it, or otherwise, if I will make that statement, you say he's insane. Mentally, he's not stab stabled, you know? Like a mental stability is not there. So God is the wisest. So there is no like a disconnection between his words as well as be between his acts. Go, go to the Tafasir books. You find the scholars, Mufassirin, trying to work out the connection between the previous ayah and the following one. And the previous surah and the following one. Why, for example, um, uh, Surah Al-Baqarah came right after Surah Al-Fatiha. What is the relevance? Because God is wise. So wise will never, wise person will never speak one about banana and one about uh, moonwalking. It's very relevant, you know, very, do you understand? So that's what we call fiqhi, approach to the holy texts. But zahiri approach is hadith is there, five conditions met, apply. 
But if you ask, in which circumstance it was told, you are using your brain, filthy brain, you are kafir, <laughs> opposing, you know? So it is literal, you can say, Zahiri understanding. Zahiri understanding. Today I'm going to give you a good number of examples of how Sahaba used to destroy each other's argument, some web, some being literalists and some being fuqaha. Okay? So that is actually, uh, we can say, a very summarized version of what I'm going to explain now. <coughs> okay. So we have four mazahib. Again, as I said, Abu Hanifa and Malik both are fiqhi approach. You will see so obviously today. Uh, Ahmad ibn Hanbal radiallahu anhu is very wahiri. Shafi is in between. Okay, now I'm going to give you a good example of Shafi. Uh, before that, I'm going to just, I really want you to understand one thing. According to Hanafi Madhab, I don't know about Maliki, Shafi, and Hanbalis, I'm really, I'm really sorry for that. According to Hanafi Madhab, uh, Sahaba split into two. Into two. One is Ma'roof, and one is Majhul. Sahaba. Sahabi in Hanafi Madhab split into two. One is Ma'roof, recognized, we know him. And one is Majhul, unknown. Majhul in here, it does not mean that we don't know his name, we don't know his uh, father's name, it, it does not necessarily mean that, even though if it may include that also. Okay? But majhul in here means we don't know because what is the usul al fiqh? Usul al fiqh is knowledge of understanding or memorizing. Am I right? Means it is a group of a sahaba, we don't know the level of their understanding, the level of their intelligence, or the level of their memory, how strong is their memory is. But in terms of ma'roof, recognized uh, sahaba split into two. You can find this split in each single usul al-fiqh by Hanafis. If even in um, usul al-shash, it's the very first book that they study in uh, Darul Looms, you can find it in the chapter of Sunnah. Ma'roof split into two. Ma'roof bil-fiqh. The first category of uh, uh, Sahaba, it is the Sahaba that who are known by very high understanding, good knowledge. Some of them maybe gave fatwa even in the time of Sahaba and they were confirmed by the Prophet that their fatwa is right. Who are them people? Obviously, the, f the first four uh, Khulafa, Abu Bakr and Siddiq, Umar, Uthman and Ali. But all of them are fuqaha, very high for. I will give you examples today, don't worry. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Zayd ibn Thabit, okay. uh, Sayyida Aisha, okay. Sayyida Hafsa, some say Faqiha, but some say no. But say the Aisha 100%. Okay. As well as uh, Ibn, Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu. All of them are Sahaba, known Sahaba. The Sahaba known by knowledge, fiqh. The second category of a Sahaba are the Sahaba who are known by hifz, the riwaya, by narrating the hadith. Riwaya, riwaya narrating, strong memory, but is a good understanding which qualifies them to be fuqaha mujtahideen, we say no. Now, the uh, Bollywood drama makers, are you trying to ins insult the sahaba? If that's what you call insulting, then yes. Okay, look, do you, there is some insane, unfortunately, authors within Hanafi Madhab, only one, as far as I know, says, all of the 124,000 of Sahaba, all of them were fuqaha and mujtahideen. 
this type of statements you should do in the langar sharif so people will say masha allah subhanallah but in terms of when you test it academically when you check it test it it does not stand in front of your filter you know in front of your principles okay don't eat single sahabi was mujtahid maqil ibn sinan what do you think about him he's majhul sahabi okay Abdullah ibn Juhar, okay, the narrator of the Raful Yadin. Ibrahim al Nakhai said, Badawiyun Bawalun, Arabiyun Bawalun ala Akibi, that Bedouin who used to urinate on his legs. Okay, Ibrahim al Nakhai Tabi saying that about uh, the um, Sahabi who spent two nights or one night with Rasulullah. So was Ibrahim insulting the Sahabi? He was not, but he was clarifying that he doesn't know even the basic issues of um, uh, Tahir and Najis, so how you can make him as a proof in the matter of Namaz. So that's what he was trying to say. Means Majhul. So the example of the Sahaba who are known by narrating is uh, Abu Huraira, Anas ibn Malik, okay, as well as Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. Radiallahu anhuma, some Hanafis classify him as Mujtahid Faqih, but he is narrator. Not Faqih, but narrator. As well as Abdullah ibn Umar. Okay, big number of the Hanafis classify him as Faqih, but some classify him as narrator. Okay, the Sahabi who is known by strong memory, narrating the hadith. Okay. Uh, Salman al Farsi, okay, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, as well as um, Abid Darda, all of them, Abu all of them, Sahaba classified as Fuqaha of the Sahaba. Okay, and then question, again, the, the Bollywood uh, drama makers, where did you get this split from? I, I took it from two things, yes? Uh, what about Jabir bin Abdullah? He's Faqih, Muaz bin Jabal, Jabir, so all of them are just list of Fuqaha. But it was not big number, as we think, you know. It was very small. How do we know? Because... Sahaba being stuck in some certain issues and going and asking Imam Ali, going and asking uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab and going and asking Ahl Badr so that shows that not each single Sahabi is Faqih independently able to actually um, uh, derive the, uh, the Ahkam from Quran and Sunnah okay um, but what about the Majhul? Majhul Sahaba, it is the Sahaba uh, obviously, we don't know the level of their memory because human beings, not all of them are equal. Am I right? The one who says all of the Sahaba had strong memory, he just go, he's saying just absurd things, you know. But us saying some of them had weak memory, we're not insulting them. We are not insulting, but we're just trying to establish like solid uh, foundation so we can stand on it and then look into the narrations. Okay, whatever I'm saying in here, you can find it even in the very first book that they study in Darul Ulum, Usul al-Shashi, you can find it. But when you go to Kashful Asrar of Abdul Aziz al-Bukhari, you find them, all of them problems by which Maulanas are making takfir on each other. <coughs> Abdul Aziz al-Bukhari believes on all. <coughs> Hanafis believe on all. Okay, so for example, saying that um, not only the average Sahaba, but Umar al-Khattab made mistake in some certain issues. Okay, Imam Ali. Okay, so there was few issues in terms of like a, a maintenance, maintenance of the lady, who widowed lady. So for example, we go with Ibn Mas'ud, am I right? And there is another opinion of uh, Imam Ali. Okay, so we say that Imam Ali was wrong in that issue. Because we are going with Ibn Mas'ud, okay? So go, I mean, stop crying and stop doing that drama and go and read your books, okay? So all of the books are supporting what we say, okay? But if you want to do drama, then burn all of your books, then come to play your drama. Or otherwise, we'll just respond to you using your own books. Anyway, so this is actually the uh, first split uh, in terms of the Sahaba. There is another one. Okay, there is another one. It is again in Usul Shashi, but it is the statement of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu. We adopted that statement of Imam Ali, and it is such an amazing statement. Now, look at this one. Imam Ali, radiallahu anhu, says, the Sahaba who narrated the knowledge of the Prophet are three. 
Look, how accurate uh, is this explanation of Imam Ali radiallahu anhu, which was adopted by Hanafis? The first category of a Sahaba who narrated the knowledge, passed on the knowledge of Rasulullah, it is a hypocrites with hidden hypocrisy, with hidden kufr, but you can say uh, externally they are good, pious Sahaba, but hypocrites. Imam Ali radiallahu anhu says. The first narrators, the first type of um, uh, narrators are munafiqs. Munafiqs, okay. Uh, Imam Ali radiallahu anhu said, those people, they claimed that they are believers, but inside they were kuffar, to do what? to destroy the religion of Rasulullah They brought many problematic things into Islam. Look, you take one thing. Um, do you remember what was the destruction, what was the reason for the uh, religion of Isa والسلام, to be destroyed? Did Isa والسلام, bring destroyed religion? Did he bring defected religion or did he brought did he bring perfect religion perfect religion but where is it now it was destroyed within the first 70 years after his death can you believe that by whom we muslims say saint paul saint paul saint paul claimed that he is christian am i right <coughs> And do you know how his conversion into Christianity came? As a result of just one meeting in which he was on his own, maybe. Okay? He was coming and he used to be a very, very hard time person, giving hard time, okay? like uh, killing and slaughtering the Christians, the true followers of Isa alayhi salam. Okay? And suddenly he was traveling from one place to another. He was coming to Damascus to kill some Christians even there because he was, he was authorized by government to kill them, okay? M maybe he was general or something like that of the secret police, police, FBI, CIA, okay? And on the way, so when he came to Damascus, he became as a saint already. So when he became saint, he said, by the way, you know, uh, I was coming, suddenly I felt unconscious, I'm just looking, <laughs> Jesus is just there, you know, saying, oh, my son, I'm missing you, you know, where have you been, baby, you know? <laughs> said, you know, go, you are Christian, and go give uh, good news. Now question. Are you guy trying to convince me that Jesus sent you to do something that he was unable? Is that what you're trying to say? One question. The second, if Jesus sends messengers, why he does not let the people know that he's sending? And why is it that only you know where is the proof I saw? Who, whom did you see? I saw Jesus. What did, so it's only something that you know. How do we know if you are right or wrong? And the, the people from the first generation, with no like questioning, no great like a, um, a intellect, they said, oh yeah, mashallah, subhanallah, you know, let's go, let's follow him. But brainy people questioned. Many people questioned, how come? Do you think that Jesus couldn't fulfill something and then he has been killed and then he sent someone else to do something that he was unable to do? Is that what you're trying? So people, many people said, no, I'm sorry, but we know our God and we know our messenger, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, and we know his teachings. So some of the Saint, um, uh, Saint Pauls of Islam, Imam Ali says, Munafiqs tried to make up stories that is attributed to uh, Rasulullah and then they did pass it on. Once Abu Hanifa, Abu Hanifa is very well known of actually rejecting the narration, some certain narration. Someone came to him saying, Imam Sahib, um, I've been told that you reject the hadith of the Prophet, statements of the Prophet Abu Hanifa said, I do not reject the statements of the Prophet but I reject the error which has been attributed to the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.
Um, the first category is a hypocrite. Do you want me to give you a good example for the hypocrites? Imam Ali radiallahu anhu, when he passed away, he actually used to have one long script. It was his judgments. Okay? And then Ibn Abbas, obviously he was in the Kufa, Wali of Kufa. Okay? So after the death of uh, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu asked that script to be brought. Okay, to Ibn Abbas. So when he did open it, so he crossed over big part of it, saying, what type of knowledge did they destroy? Okay, so what is the time period between Ali and Ibn, Mas Ibn Abbas? Same time. Who inserted the two-thirds of that extra judgments of Ali? Who is the one who did it? Hypocrites. Saint Paul of Islam. Anyway, Imam Ali radiallahu anhu saying the first category of a narrators of the knowledge of the Prophet it is hypocrites, okay, and the second type is a Bedouins. It is a Bedouin who came to ask Rasulullah only one question, came asking about zakat, okay, or came just to make bayah, accepting the religion. Many delegations came, am I right? And then Ali radiallahu anhu said, he came to uh, uh, spend only a very short time, and he heard the Prophet saying something, and he thought that he's understanding the Prophet, but he misunderstood. And when he went back to his tribe, he did pass on this hadith, but by his own understanding. Now, now knowledge is disconnected from its original source, am I right? Rasulullah Islam was speaking about something, but Bedouin understood it in wrong way. Now question, do you think that Prophet speaks in alien language? I don't say that, but Prophet speaks in human being language. And human being, they, the, their language, even for example Arabic, it differs. For example, if you go to Yorkshire, Yorkshire, London, UK, same place. In Yorkshire, they say, uh, all right, Replies, all right, means, hello, how are you doing? And the second who says, all right, means, I'm doing well. Okay, but all right does not mean that. But it is your dialect. But it is English, it is same English, you know. Go to London, if you say, all right, he will say, thank you very much, yes, I'm fine. But if you respond it on this way, in your share, he would say, where this Bedouin is coming from. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying all right, and he's saying I'm fine. <laughs> Why he's not saying all right also? Okay, but if you would go to London and someone would ask you all right, and if you would, some uh, Yorkshire person would say all right, London person would say, is he insane? I'm asking you, are you fine? He's asking me, are you fine? Is he trying to like insult me or something, you know? So it is just, but it is same English, same country. So that, that Bedouin from different tribe coming to Medina and Rasulullah is speaking. Everyone has got his own way of speaking, his own habits while speaking. Am I right? So for example, when I say to you, are you okay, baby? It means that I'm actually angry at you. But if you go to somewhere, Las Vegas, are you okay, baby? So it means something different. But it's exactly the same sentence, baby. Okay, so um, in here, from here we understand that someone coming just to spend one day, one night, and hearing the prophet saying, and thinking that he's understanding. So he will go back to his tribe, and then he will say, prophet said so, but he would be narrating by the meaning, which he didn't understand. Now, error was attributed to the prophet. Okay, so that is the second category of a narrators. The third category of a narrator is mu'min. The true believer who spent, Imam Ali says, who spent long time with the Prophet, traveling with him, okay, settling with him, uh, being with him in the battles, everywhere. so he knows the habit of the Prophet. He knows from the walking of the Prophet if Rasulullah is happy or he's displeased, you know. So he will know 
and he will hear the statement of the prophet and he will understand it properly and digest it properly and then he will pass it on properly. Okay, so that is actually third category of the narrators according to Imam Ali and we accepted these, we can say, three categories in Hanafi Madhab. Now, <coughs> yeah. Uh, Sheikh, does it mean that the, uh, the Bedouin can also be right? Can we say that they are all uh, rejected because they are uh, Arabi? Or could we also say they are also maybe Sahabis who live in Medina but can also misinterpret uh, these studies? Yeah, so that's why we do have the fuqaha, such as Imam Abu Hanifa, who will actually test the narrations, not each single thing we accept. Okay, so the narration which will be accepted, it's either narrated by hundreds of a Sahaba, now it's untouchably true. Or if it's only one narration, so then you pick up that uh, picture, just piece of the picture, and then you compare it to the rest of the picture. If it fits in, you accept it, or otherwise you say there was some error in the narration. Okay. So, if you remember, I did mention it, this uh, story. It's very famous hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. Rasulullah says, people be aware that any breathing, any alive breathing creature now will be dead after 100 years. Now, if you think about it, each single alive will include the trees also, am I right? Animals, birds, but then Rasulullah is saying breathing. So it is animals. After 100 years, will be dead. So it is very big claim. So does it mean that Rasulullah in there is to establish a history? Okay, so some of the Sahaba used to narrate this hadith, warning the people, being all oh, people be ready, your Qiyam is happening. After 100 years. Narrating this hadith. And then Imam Ali radiallahu anhu called that sahabi saying, I've been told that you are narrating this hadith. Is it right? He said yes. Because I've heard the Prophet saying it. Then Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said, because he's very well faqih, he does not just pick up whatever he finds in Sahih al-Bukhari and acts upon it. But he compares it, thinks, analyzes. So he said, when Rasulullah was saying it, he was speaking to us, any of you are who are to whom I'm speaking to now in that group, in that gathering, not any of you will stay alive after 100 years. Did you understand? So it was so easy hadith. But then misunderstanding and making it so complicated, so now people are using it to say that Khuzr is dead because of this hadith. You're taking two, you're overstretching it. Okay, so if you know the hadith, which is very famous, um, they do believe on, for example, hadith al Jassasa. Do you know that creature in some island? Okay, and Dajjal being there. Do you remember Tamim Dari narrating that Dajjal being locked up, questioning about the, um, about the uh, uh, lake of uh, Tabariya and many other things? Do you remember? So they believe we. Obviously, we do believe that Dajjal will come. And some of, the, some of us say that that is the Dajjal. If that hadith means all of the breathing creatures will die, means Dajjal is dead long ago. Am I right? But then no one is saying that. Something wrong in that. What is that error? What is that wrong? Fuqaha, the real fuqaha understood from this hadith of everyone will be dead after 100 years. The real fuqaha understood that anyone who was present in front of the Prophet when Rasulullah was speaking, so them, hundred, uh, them people will die within 100 years. That's it. Okay. As well as another hadith, also hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, and this is also in Sahih al-Bukhari. And another hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, Rasulullah is saying, it was actually delegation, Delegation um, uh, from Saqif, as far as I remember, from Bani Saqif, Taif is Wallah Alam. But it was delegation. One of them said, Ya Rasulullah, Mat al when Yom al Qiyam is going to happen? Rasulullah just looked into the youngest member of the tribe. So he said, Before this young kid will reach the age, the old age, 
Qiyamah will start. Day of Judgment will start. It's over 1,400 years. Qiyamah is not happening. Some of the, again, the Mahabharata brothers said <laughs> it is scientific miracle that the, that kid is still alive and he's still kid. And he will join the army of Mahdi. Where is the proof? Hidden awliya. So it is, you can say, just hunky-punky, you know, just hunky-punky. So it's easier to say it is, as Abu Hanifa said, error has been attributed to the Prophet. Prophet never said that. Hadith is authentic, it is in Bukhari. So what? So what? The one who was fabricating this hadith, he fabricated authentic hadith. Chain also to it, you know, not big deal. Okay, or the one who was narrating the hadith, he missed some point. He misunderstood some point. Okay? Within the same Sahih al-Bukhari, just next to it, the same hadith has been narrated in the proper way. So what was the actual text of the hadith? Rasulullah says, before this young kid will reach the old age, the judgment of each of you will start. Each of us will be questioned in the great, great, am I right? Understood. So easy hadith. But because of them, uh, Mahabharat brothers bringing on uh, you guys, scientific miracle. Hidden Awliya told me that he's going to join the army of Mahdi. <coughs> he will stay alive, young. So it is just hunky-punky, you know? So anyway, um, so, uh, so that is actually misunderstanding. Anyway, coming back to the mazahib. So we have four mazahib. Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi, and uh, Hanbali. So now let's try to understand the issue of the mazahib. <coughs> Um, now, if you look into the sources of the Mazahib, you understand what these Mazahib are about. Who knows uh, what is the main source of Hanafi Mazhab? Obviously, three main ones and one extra. The main source of Hanafi Mazhab is. No, 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 no. Within the Sahaba. Obviously, Quran, Sunni, Ijma, etc. First one is. Opinion of Imam Hanifa? Of course, um, uh, Abu Hanifa takes it from Ibn Masood. Ibn Masood. First one is Umar. Who is this guy called Umar? Umar is Umar, okay? So, Umar, radiallahu anhu, is the person who is. Such amazing, who held such amazing, who held such amazing way of analyzing. So, do you remember the incident of Maqam Ibrahim? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, wa attakhidhu min maqam Ibrahim a musalla. Am I right? Make the Maqam Ibrahim a place for you to pray. Am I right? Maqam Ibrahim, it is actually like a, like a beam, like a rock, in which uh, Ibrahim والسلام, used to stand, so he would reach like a higher places to put the br bricks, you know, when he was building the Kaaba. And Ismail والسلام, would give it to him. So then, when he was doing it, so his feet just went into the rock. So that is the Maqam Ibrahim. Okay? So it shows that obviously Maqam Ibrahim was just attached to the wall. Am I right? Because he would stand there to build the wall. Am I right? Question. But now, Maqam Ibrahim is something about three or four meters away from the Kaaba. Am I right? Does it mean that he used to stand, stand there, picking up uh, uh, and just throwing? You know? It never happened. So how come that Maqam Ibrahim is detached from the Kaaba? Reason is, Umar radiallahu anhu, he is the one who did detach it from it. How? Look how brain works. <clears throat> One, so in his Khilafa period, so he saw people are going to make tawaf, people are increasing. But some people standing next to the Maqam Ibrahim and praying, they're confusing the, the uh, tawaf. Umar, right? Umar said, I'm going to 
leave a gap in between the Kaaba and the Maqam, so people will be going, performing Tawaf perfectly, but in the same time, Maqam Ibrahim will be there. That is fiqh, am I right? But then, isn't it bid'ah? We said bid'ah of two, two types. Bid'ah, which is classed into the Quran and Sunnah, that is bid'ah sayyah, and bid'ah which supports Quran and Sunnah, or which is supported by Quran and Sunnah. So this is supported by Quran and Sunnah. Why? Because Allah did not specify where Maqam Ibrahim has to be standing, but he said, wherever it is, make that place the namaz, namazi place. That's it, easy. But how did he come to that conclusion? So he looked into the circumstance and then he used his brain. Quran does not specify that Maqam Ibrahim has to stay wherever it is, okay? But he said, Allah said, وَاتَّقِذُ مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُصَلَّى Maqam Ibrahim is a rock. Pray next to it. Okay. So that is fiqh. Okay, oh, another thing. If you remember, uh, uh, the Masjid and Nabawi, very uh, small uh, building, Muslims, new Muslims are accepting Islam. We need bigger hall. The capacity of the, uh, the initial building, which is built by Rasulullah to the Sahaba, is not enough. What to do? The first question came, the first problem happened in the time of Umar radiallahu anhu. And afterward it repeated itself in the time of Uthman, but the first problem was in the time of Umar. Umar radiallahu anhu said, I'm going to expand it. Sahaba said, oh, how you are going to do it? You know, Rasulullah left it as it is, and Rasulullah was happy with its initial size. And why are you going to change what Rasulullah confirmed? Look the understanding of this person called Umar. Umar radiallahu anhu said, O oh people, aren't you are the ones who narrate the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, where he says, anyone who builds a mosque for the sake of God, even on the size of the house of the bird, Allah will build a house and palace for him in paradise. They said yes. So he said, so then why are you questioning me then? Brain is working, baby. Brain is working. Okay? So, it's not that literal meaning, you know, I don't know how to grab the, the uh, watermelon, so that's why I do not eat it. It's better. I will eat more, you know? I will eat more. So, uh, anyway, Umar, radiallahu anhu. So, that is the first source of the Hanafi <coughs> Masjid. Okay? The second source is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Ibn Mas'ud from the beginning, from A till Z is fiqh. Okay, Ibn Mas'ud from A till Z is thinking, analyzing. As well as I missed about Umar radiallahu anhu. Do you know the famous statement in which, which we narrate all the time? Al-Hiqu al-Ashbaha bil ashbah wa nazaira bin nazair Even we Hanafis as well as Shafi's, we have the book of Qawaid called Al-Ashbah wa nazair The similar um, issues and cases. Where did they get this name from? al wal Nazar. They took it from Umar. Saying, if you do not find anything from Quran and Sunnah, so then compare the similar incidents to the ones that you have in Quran and Sunnah. Fiqh. Again, brain, you know. The filthy brain, as you guys say. Okay? So, that is Umar. Ibn Mas'ud is again from A to Z is Faqih. Okay? Very First statement, the very first, you can say, comment of the Prophet to Ibn Mas'ud was إِنَّكَ غُلَامٌ muallam. You are indeed learned young kid. غُلَام means boy. Because Ibn Mas'ud, what was the, uh, how did they meet? So if you remember, it was Sukh Ikal, Sukh Ukal, sorry. Rasulullah Islam and Abu Bakr, they went to spread Islam, obviously. When they were coming back, they were very thirsty, hungry, thirsty. And then uh, uh, Abu Bakr al Siddiq, he's such an amazing personality that he would understand the Prophet without Prophet speaking. Straight to hand stood, time to eat and to drink. He sacrificed all of his money, all of his wealth for the sake of Rasulullah. So straight away he went, he met a shepherd. He said, Do you have any, um, any uh, sheep that we can milk? Please, can you sell us some milk? Abu Bakr is asking. So then, um, 
Ibn Mas'ud said, it's, as you can see, it's very slim and it is not the time, so there is not any milking one. Okay? So then Rasulullah came and he uh, found what's happening and then he said, do you have any female sheep? Uh, Ibn Mas'ud said, yes, yes. So then he took him. So then Rasulullah read some Quran and then wiped okay, on the sheep and started milking. And it was coming out. Milk was coming out. Ibn Mas'ud was shocked. So he said, Please, can you teach me some of these recitations that you do? Okay, so then, first comment. So, Rasulullah said, إِنَّكَ غُلَامٌ muallam. You are learned young man. Learned young man. And in the same gathering, they say, Ibn Mas'ud learned seven surahs in one go from the Prophet As well as, Ibn Mas'ud is the person who spent with the Prophet from the very beginning, even before Umar radiallahu anh, accepted Islam, from very beginning up to the end. Traveling with the Prophet, looking after the like a uh, wudu of the Prophet, miswak, preparing the miswak, etc. So, so very closely attached. So definitely this person will know all of the habits of the Prophet. Alayhi salatu was salam. Okay? And we know so many judgments in which Ibn Mas'ud gave his own opinion when there was no any um, any uh, hadith or sunnah or, or any Quran. So even when uh, Umar radiallahu anh, who was sending him to Kufa with uh, Ammar ibn Yasir, so then uh, Umar radiallahu anh, who said, Oh people of Kufa, uh, be, be grateful because I am giving you superiority on top of myself by sending Ibn Mas'ud. Because uh, Umar radiallahu anh, who needed all the time some advice to bring the Sahaba to take some certain decisions, complicated decisions. So the main, you can say, two pillars of the opinion or the decision of Umar would be Imam Ali and Ibn Mas'ud. So he said, I'm sending one with you guys and holding one. Okay, Abu Hassan is staying with me, but you are taking one. So it means this person is a person of fuqh, questioning, reasoning, asking. And the third one is Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, and the greatest one. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. And Imam, Imam Ali is the greatest faqih ever. Okay. So uh, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal radiallahu anhu said, there is no any sahabi um, who has that big number of uh, virtues which is confirmed by the Prophet as Imam Ali does. Okay, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. So it's again that huge brain he who does not stay with like a, uh, with the literal meaning of the hadith, but questions and asks. Okay. So do you remember the hadith? Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "غَيْرُ شَيْبَتَكُمْ وَلَا تَشَبَّهُ الْيَهُودَ." Oh, "وَلَا خَالِفُ الْيَهُودَ خَالِفُ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَغَيْرُ شَيْبَتَكُمْ." Oh, come on, means hadith is very famous. Change the white color of your hairs. Okay. And don't look like Ahl al-Kitab, Christians and Jews. So they do not do it, so you oppose them. And Imam Ali radiallahu anhu used to have white hair and white beard. Someone came to him, again, Zahiri, like a mentality maybe, of, like a way of understanding, saying, Ya Amir al muminin how come that you do not change the color of your hairs and uh, beard? Okay, isn't it that Rasulullah ordered? Hadith is narrated by many people, so he said. Then Imam Ali responded, so he said, Yes, Rasulullah ordered whenever he did order, because in that time we were minority. Just few, like maybe a few hundreds of uh, Muslims. And Rasulullah wanted, wanted us to be different to them. Okay, so to not to disappear in them. But now, when we are majority, big number, no one cares if you uh, uh, change the color or you do not. That's it. So, hadith is that, saying change it. But Imam Ali is clarifying why to change. Man of a brain. Man of a brain. Man of a brain. So, and many other, if you go to the biography of Imam Ali, you find many examples where Imam Ali, radiallahu anhu, actually gives reasoning of the, uh, to the ahadith and ahiyat. Okay? So from there you understand what type of mentality 
will Abu Hanifa have? Because his source of madhab is them, people who question, people who follow the reasoning, you know, who use the, um, the brain, you know. It's not only the hadith is that, that's it, let's fall. It's not that, but actually questioning why Rasulullah did do so. Okay, so this is the Holy Trinity of the Hanafi Mazhab. And there is one extra which Abu Hanifa uses quite often. Okay, it is, who can help me? Who is that extra? Excellent. Sayyid Aisha. Them three on one side, Sayyid Aisha. Sayyid Aisha gave really hard time to all of them three. <laughs> Okay, there is even a hadith, like uh, many uh, issues in which Sayyidah Aisha challenged the Sahaba.